the revelation of the book Revelation part 16. I'm Professor Hannes Redlingheis of the First Assembly of Jaffa Shua in South Africa, Victoria, Montana Assembly. Should you require any information about the books which I've written, especially the two keys to the book of Revelation, which is the handbook that I'm using, which I've written uh, some time ago. It's an A4 book and it's nearly 800 pages worth of information. Uh, the equivalent in the world, it does not have the equivalent. And you can trust me, uh, for 56 years I do the research and studies in the eschatology, so I think I should know a bit about the subject. If this is the first time that you are participating in the study, please go to part one and start from the front. But also subscribe and also share the link with your friends. Should you require any of the books which I've written, uh, contact Pastor Rico, my wife, uh, on her WhatsApp 0722-367-124 or go to my website https double point hyphen ya y a h fa v a h ya fa dot c o dot z a all small letters uh, i trust that this study will be a blessing unto you in the name of yafashua hallelujah we will now continue where we left off last week we need to pay attention to the following verse there's a lot of truth in the scripture that we are uh, busy studying Colossians, Colossians 2 verse 11 to 14 and we are at uh, verse 14 the spiritual summons if you have the handbook this is 1.17 verse 14 says blotted out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us blotting out in other words clearing out Finish it off, take it out, wash it off, take it away. That was against us when we were heathens. Because we were not Israelites, we were heathens from the ten lost uh, northern tribes of Israel. Which was contrary to us, which is the 630 laws of Moses. And he took out of the way, nailed it to the cross. So what has Yahushua done? The 613 laws of Moses, he nailed it to the cross. And that's why uh, we, we keep the two kingly laws. Here Israel, Yahweh Elohim is one, and we must love your neighbor like yourself. The whole Bible foundation in the New Testament is built upon the two kingly laws. Blotted out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, as a Paul, Apostle Paul draws our attention to the fact that the ordinance of the circumcision, the ordinance of what? Of the circumcision of the law of Moses. And even Abraham's circumcision has been taken out. Because again, you must not forget that Moses after uh, when writing the laws the 613 laws he does put emphasis on the circumcision every son uh, every boy child on the age of eight days must be circumcised so he says the enemy i want to read this the, the scripture uh, he says first of all he blotted out the handwritings of the ordinance of what the 613 laws of moses which was contradicting, contrary to us. In the Old Testament, the 613 laws of Moses held us hostage. It held Israel hostage. Well, we were not there, but Israel. It held Israel hostage. Why? Because they couldn't do anything else. They couldn't operate in anything else except the 613 laws of Moses. And he says in the sea part, and he took it out of the way, the way, and he nailed it to the cross. So what has he done? What has Yahushua done with the 613 laws of Moses? He nailed it to the cross. He broke the bond of the law that made people aware of sin. Paul says if it wasn't for the laws, we would have not known sin. So that is a good thing to, to become to know sin. But there was not one person saved through the 613 laws of Moses. 
Ik zei, uh, uh, hier nog, hoe was, hoe was uh, uh, raptured away or drawn away in Elijah. They were, but, and hier nog, it wasn't even under the 613 laws of Moses. So what otherwise he says, he took it out of the way, nailed it to the cross, uh, to be able to institute a new covenant of grace. He had to nail the 613 laws to the cross in order to institute a new covenant of grace through the blood of Yahweh. It's impossible to have the Old and New Testament fun functioning in the same time. You can't have one foot in the Old Testament and one foot in the New Testament. You can't. The Old Testament is for Israel. The New Testament is for the bride, for the Yafist. Yafa Almighty is not interested in a fleshly covenant anymore. This is actually what this scripture says. You must go and read it. You must study it. He's not interested in a fleshly covenant anymore, but has pleasure in a spiritual covenant covenant, hallelujah, between the bride of Yahushua in the New Testament and his son. That's why he gave us a New Testament. The Old Testament died because of age. Nearly a thousand, nearly a thousand years. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. I want to say it otherwise. It was redundant. In today's terms, we would have said it's fit for recycling. But because it's got no purpose in my life or your life. Except the knowledge of the Old Testament about the prophets and the other uh, 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 people that Yahweh used, like Daniel and Isaiah. And it's good to know the prophets and the scriptures. But even the Torah, to understand it, the knowledge, you, knowledge is power. This is what my father taught me since I was 13 years old. Knowledge in the word is power. Makes you powerful. So let's not just throw away the Old Testament. There's a lot to learn about it. But it's not my weight of salvation. My salvation comes through the blood of Yahushua, which he shed for us. The following scriptures in the New Testament will make us understand how women, listen nicely, Women or ladies also became part of the covenant because according to the Old Testament women had no part in the covenant of Abraham Which according to the Old Testament was only for the boys and the men very simple straightforward Women had no right in the Old Testament. They were sort of slaves And that's why Sarah called Abraham my Lord Lord servant with others. She was his servant and for many, many years, even into in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, a lot of women were trained as a slave of her husband. Totally subjected under her husband. Uh, in the modern time, through the internet, influence of the internet and everything, people became to, to become more reluctant about that. And women started to grow out. As people started to understand the scriptures. Now the word says, uh, oh, we're going to move to 1.18. Uh, you are all children of Yahweh Almighty. You are all children, which mean men and women. The following part of your study will confirm the fact that we, we are lost Gentiles. who became part of the bride of Yahweh Shua even in the 21st century. You must understand that from the time that Yahushua asked the woman at the well, the Sumerian woman, give me some water, he started to minister to the Gentiles. For two years of his life, he had a three-year ministry. Since he was immersed by John the Immerser, for three years still he was uh, uh, put to rest in the grave or died on the cross. Let's start with the, uh, the cross. Died on the cross. That three years, two years of that, he just ministered to Israel. They would not accept him. And Pontius Pilate said, there's your Savior, your Redeemer, your Messiah. He says, nothing of us. Crucify him, crucify him. Why? Their ears have been closed, uh, blinded. Their ears have been sealed off. Not to accept Yahushua as the Messiah. 
in order for the gospel of salvation to go to the Gentiles. And that's for two years, Yahushua just ministered to Israel and the Hebrew people. And then when he went to the well where the Sumerian woman was and he asked for water, he said, if you give me water, I will give you water and it will become a living fountain, an upspring of living waters that will just flow from your inside, outside. And it, will just, and it continues. And since that day, up till today, 2024, in this 21st century, he never stopped ministering to the, to the heathen people, the heathen or Gentile people, uh, people. And that's why we, who we were, we were Gentiles. Lost from the grace, lost from the law, lost from everything. And then Yahushua came into our lives. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do now, we're going to study this next three verses, which is Galatians 3 verse 26 to 29, making your note. Galatians 3 verse 26 to 29. Verse 26. Now we must understand what the scripture says. Let's read word for word. For you are all the children of Yahweh our Elohim, in the 16th heavenly will say God, by faith in Yahushua. This scripture contradicts what was said to Abraham. The sign of the Old Testament covenant was only for who? Come on. Only for the men, child, boy, uh, 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 men, childs, the the sons and the men. The above scripture states, "For you are all." He says, "Yeah," but in the it, it actually means you. For ye yeah, or you are all children of Yahweh your Elohim by what? By circumcision of the faith? No, 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 no. That was for the men. But he says, you are all children of Yahweh, your Elohim, by faith in Yahweh Shua. Has any one of us ever seen Yahweh Shua? No. He's, he lived 2,000 years ago, but you're still today serving a redeemer that you have, nobody has seen for 2,000 years. People is prepared to die in the dark ages, 115, uh, 150 million Christians and Jews and Yafist were killed for the gospel of Yahushua and they never saw him. Come on. That's faith. That's believing without seeing. Our faith is not by sight. It happens in our soul's dimension, not our hearts, our soul's dimension. The above scripture states for you are all children. Now a children is an heir. Children is one that is part of the family. For, and Paul says we are all children of Yapa our Elohim, the Father. By faith in Yahushua. He does not exclude the woman. Listen nicely. Instead he says, by faith anyone can become a child of Yapa our Elohim, man and woman. Ladies, are you glad? You should be jumping up and down from, for joy. Why? Because you were for, 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 for generations and, uh, and centuries and centuries, hundreds of centuries, you were out, you, you were excluded of the grace of your Pashua. And now you are adopted. You are adopted into the childhood through the blood of your Pashua. Isn't that wonderful? I don't even want to use the name adopted. You are drawn into the kingdom of Yahushua through his blood. Man and woman. The next verse opens this revelation even bit further. Verse 27. For how many of you have been immersed into Yahushua? What does it say? You have to be immersed into Yahushua. What does Matthew 28, 19 states? Can you quickly help me? What does Matthew, it just comes to, to mind. Matthew 28, 19, what does it say? Go thee and immerse or baptize. They use the word, go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? So who has given that instruction? Yeah, for sure. 
He says to his apostles, you go and you immerse in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Am I right? 100% right. Can you show me one place in the whole of the Bible, in the whole of the New Testament? Oh, you can even use the Old Testament as well if you want to try. Try to see if you find it. Can you show me one scripture when one person was ever immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yes, people are immersed in the name of Jesus Christ to the remission of their sin, Acts 2, 38. Uh, uh, 36 to, 40, to 41. Wait a bit, wait a bit. He said, go immerse in the name of. Now, the, now comes the church and they, Im they immerse the people in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's different ways they do it. And not one of them is scriptural. Did you know that? Prof, you're crazy. Well, that's what I read in the Bible. You show me one scripture in the Bible where anybody was ever immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can have my car. And don't think because I live in Africa, I don't have a proper sports car. I've got a proper muscle car. And I'm not bragging about it. I grew, I, I, we were in business for more than 40 years and I had garages used car garages, so I know cars. I've got a very sought after SLK Mercedes-Benz 350, specially tuned with all the bells and whistles. If you can show me one scripture, anywhere from the world, where anybody was ever immersed in the titles of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what am I doing? I'm not sitting here bragging. That's not. My heart is full of gladness in Yah for sure for what we have. But this is things that we worked for. It came our part we, because we were in business for more than 45 years. I want to say, show me one scripture where anybody was immersed. Because Father is not His name. I'm a father. You almost probably is a father. Son, I is not my name. I'm a son. You most probably are a son, and then I, the, also the ladies are speaking to you. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. So what is that three? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, what's that? It's titles. It's like you say, nephew, niece, uncle, aunt, doctor, professor. You call it, that's titles. That's titles. That's not his name. You can call me by a lot of things. I'm a father, I'm a son. I'm a, I was a... A, a doctor, I was a, I, I am a professor, so I've got different titles. So do you most probably have more titles than I have, but it's not your name. When you call my, the name Hannes, if you say Hannes, I will, you will have my attention. If there's a group of people and I say to them, all the fathers, can you please stand? Who is entitled to stand? Every man that has got a child. He is a father, but his name is not father. There's 300 people standing. They all have the same title, but they all 300 have different names. In the same group, I say, all those who are sons, can you please arise? If there's 500 people in the audience, and 300 of them are, are men, they all have to stand on their two feet. Why? Because they are the sons of their fathers. And Holy Spirit, that is a title like Father and Son, which refers to the Ruach HaKodesh, the Hebrew uh, reference to the Holy Spirit, which is His name. Holy Spirit is a title. So Yahushua gives the instruction. Go immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is titles. It's not a name. And that one you won't find in the 1611 King James Bible, New King James, International Living, New World, Living Word. You can, there's 300, more than three, 400 English Bibles today. You won't find a scripture where anybody was immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you use the Tectus Receptus text of Desirius Erasmus of 1522, or the Lysiohansa Byzantine text of the 2nd century, that's the two major Greek texts 
although there are 5,333 Triffin Creek, Texas today. And that's the first thing when I talk to somebody or speak to it, I first want to know which Greek text you are using and which Bible are you using. So we speak from the same platform. So you won't find. In any of the Bibles that where people were immersed, I'm talking about the recognized Bibles, you won't find one scripture where anybody was immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they were all immersed. Go to Acts 2, 36 to 41, in the name of Yahshua, to the remission of your sins. In the 1611 Bible, it will say, in the name of Jesus Christ, to the remission of your sins. And that day, 3,000 people were immersed or came to repentance and they gave their heart to Yahshua and they were immersed in what name? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No, no, no. But why didn't Peter and the apostles immerse them according to the instruction of Yahshua? Yahshua's instruction was immerse them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you why? Because when Yahshua told Peter, you are the rock upon which I will build my church, he never meant upon Peter, because Peter didn't even have the guts, the personality, the moment that they captured Yahshua uh, in the garden. Uh, the, the maid said to him, are you one of them? You talk like that. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I, but you understand. He didn't, he didn't acknowledge that he was an apostle, a, a disciple, because he feared his life. And Yahshua said to him, you are the rock upon which I will build It's not what he says. Upon the message which Peter will bring after the outpouring of the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, verse 1 and verse 2, there, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2, there we find that he changed. Oh, the moment that they received the, the gifts of the, the Ruach HaKodesh, he changed, he became, if he was the rock, did you know that in Greek, Pedro, which is Peter, as we know him. Pedro in Greek means small pebbles or small stones. So he's not a rock. His name says he's not a rock. He's a small stone or a pebble. But Yahweh was referring to himself about as the rock of all ages. But I'm going to use you, Peter. I'm going to give you the key of heaven. What is the key? Is that the cross that all the the priest and the, the Pope and all the, the, the nuns, that is that the cross? They say that's the key of Peter. No, 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 it's not. Peter used the key, it's a spiritual key, on the day of Pentecost. After he was filled in with the Ruach HaKodesh, he used the key in Acts 2, 32 to 41, and he opened the kingdom of heaven unto the people that stood around and listened to the people who received the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in the, well, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, where they spoke in different tongues. They, would, they wasn't making a noise. No, no, they wasn't making a noise. They were speaking in tongues so that the Greeks could understand and the Gentiles could understand. And they spoke in their tongues. And Yahweh revealed it unto the apostles. And they say, how do we get these people? They are Hebrew people. And we hear them speaking in their own tongues. In their own languages. And then what did Yaffa do? Peter stood up full of the Ruach. And he used the key of heaven. And he opened the gospel of salvation. That what was sealed in the Old Testament. That what was locked away in the Old Testament for 3,000 years or more. He took the key of the gospel of salvation and he opened it unto everybody that's there. Men and women. He spoke the gospel of truth. He revealed the name. He says, they asked Peter in Acts 2.32, what must we do? He, say, uh, uh, he says, Acts 2.36, he says, what must we do brother? He says, repent. Immersing or baptizing without repentance is a waste of time. You're taking a dry sin and you're making a wet sinner. You have to repent. You have to leave. You have to turn around from your sin. So what happens as he preached the gospel of salvation, using the key of salvation, opening the gospel from heaven on the earth, 
Jehovah said, what you lock in heaven shall be locked, or what you unlock on the earth shall be unlocked. So we unlock the gospel of salvation unto the people, the, the, the Gentile people that was all there. There was not only Hebrew people. There was Gentiles of every nation, and he spoke the gospel of salvation, opening the kingdom of Jehovah, so that the woman could even understand it. And on that day, 3,000 people were immersed in the name of Yahshua to the remission of your sin. Because the name Jesus could not exist. The name Jesus only was, the letter J never existed. In that, sta in that stage, the name Isis, the name Isis did not even exist. Between 100 and 127 after Yahshua died, then only the name Yahshua was changed to Isis, who is Nimrod, who is Zeus, the sun gods, who is Isis, the sun gods. And for a thousand, five thousand, eight hundred years, the Catholics used the name, oh, a thousand, five hundred years, the Catholics used the name Isis as Jesus. It was no Isis. There was no Jesus. Um, um, it was Yahshua that became Isis. In the 16th century, they created the letter J in the Greek and in Hebrew, and then the name Jesus originated, where Isis became Jesus, which became Jesus. You with me? So they could not immerse the people on the day of Pentecost, Peter, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because Peter had the key to unlock the gospel of salvation, understanding that his name is Yahshua. And that's why Apostle Paul in Acts 19 verse 1 to 6, when he found disciples, they re-immersed them because uh, 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 John the Immerser immersed him. He couldn't immerse him. He says they must trust in him that is coming after him. That's Yahshua. But he couldn't immerse him with the remission of their sin because Yahshua has not died yet. And when they heard this, they were re-immersed. Go read Acts 19 verse 1 to 6. In the name of Yahshua to the remission of their sin. Hallelujah. And the Ruach HaKodesh came upon them and they spoke in different tongues. Now let's go back now. So there's not one place in the Bible where anybody was ever immersed in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. If I look at the, what Peter does, he takes the key of the gospel of salvation and he unlocks the message of salvation unto the Gentiles. Not the Jews, the Israelites, they were sealed off. They could not hear, they could not see, which is Yahweh's plan in order to take the message of salvation to the Gentiles. Now we have Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul is making a statement in Galatians 3, 26, 29. For you all are children of Yahweh, that's verse 26, our Elohim in faith in Yahweh. We become children in faith. Verse 27. For as many of you have been immersed into Yahshua. With other words, we have been baptized, call it baptized, immerse. I like the word immerse. Immerse, have put on Yahshua. So with other words, people that came to repentance, living the sinful lives, you take the old man of sin and you immerse him in the water. And here's the woman coming in as well. Because Apostle Paul says, for many as you, he doesn't say men only, as many as you, who's the you? It's man and woman. As many of you have immersed into your Pashua. What is the immersing? What does uh, Romans uh, 6 verse 1 to 12 says? It is a baptism. It's a burial. We are buried with your Pashua as he was buried and we rise with him. You go and read the scripture. Romans 6 verse, 6 verse 1 to 12. We grow into your Pashua in the same uh, a stature as he was buried and he lived, he came, he, he raised from the grave. We are sinners, the, the old man of sin is buried, and the new person in Yahshua is new. He arose. You can't tell me what I was. I'm that not. I'm a new creation in Yahshua. For as many as you have been immersed into Yahshua, have put on Yahshua. You put on means you put something on. If I sat here without a shirt, 
Then I'm, my, my top what part of my body is naked. So what do I need to do? I put on my shirt before I come and I sit here. I put on. When I confess Yafashua as my Savior, I put on the wedding garment. You will see it now. Ladies, fasten your seatbelts. It means that every man or woman who has been immersed in the water in the name of Yafashua, put on Yafashua. That's our wedding garment. This means that we have now put on our wedding garment. There is no mentioning of any circumcisions in this conversation. Instead, the scripture states, for as many as you, it doesn't say the children, the boy child from eight, eight days. Everyone who has repented and has been immersed have put on Yafashua for a part for as many as you. This means that through new birth, through this new birth, you become one in Yafashua as man and woman. So the moment that we have immersed in the name of, it must be in the name of Yafashua. It takes away all the different nationalities and man and woman. All the restrictions that was there for Abram, Father Abram, and through Moses, that was through the 613 laws, was only for men, not one for women. 613 laws only for the men, not one for the women. Now, what happens now? Yafashua, he says, he's not satisfied that we are circumstanced by the flesh, but by our spirits, not even our hearts. The word Prat spoke about our hearts, it means our, our soul's dimension. This is where the war goes on every day. I want you to go and read the scripture in Galatians 3 verse 26 and 29 and find for yourself how Yaffa opened the kingdom which was only for men only. It was only for men's club. Suddenly so becomes to who wants to come, to who wants to repent and be immersed in the name of Yaffa Shua. Time has caught up with us. Until next week, if his father's will, Maranatha, Yafashua is coming back again. Hallelujah.